Everyone, I am Bunala Mahasani and I will be with Ryan the Rhino um, through this whole activity. Well, we are going to talk about loss of biodiversity. But first, we would like for you to look at this picture. Well, in this picture, we have all sorts of things that God created. We have the sun, we have trees, we have water, we have humans and all sorts of animals. Well, we're going to talk about loss of diversity as I said. Well, loss of biodiversity, to explain it, um, we have to start by explaining what biodiversity is. It is when there is plants and animals and humans living in a certain area. Well, this simply is telling us that we all need each other. Humans need plants and animals as plants and animals need trees and waters and etc. Well, in this coming activity, we're going to explain a little bit more further on how loss of biodiversity starts or is active. So for this activity I will be the human and then Shano Pato over here will be water and then Bukamoso and Butila over here will be uh, the plants and then we have Maso, Jabu and Bunolo as um, our animals. Well in this activity I'm going to show you how I, the human, can destroy, can start destroying biodiversity. Well, imagine I come, I put Clonella Fatal, I put all sorts of waste, all sorts of rubbish, and then Clonella Fatal comes and clean. What happens to her? She becomes polluted and unuseful. Then what's next? The plants need Clonella Fatal. Then our water is polluted. They can't survive. What happens to them? They also die. Then we have our animals who depend on the plants. If all our animals don't have anything to eat, what happens to them? They all die. Who's left in the circle? I'm left. But then I need water, I need plants, and I need animals. And if they're all not there, what happens to me? I die. Simply meaning, in biodiversity, we all need each other. If we keep creating a loss, we all end up dying because we need each other to survive. We need water to survive, we need plants to survive, we need animals to survive, and they all need us to survive because they need to be taken care of. This is how we see that in biodiversity, we need each other. Thank you. We can move to our next activity. Class, Ryan and I are going to share a story 
with you from Zambia. Um, the story is the king who killed the frogs. Once upon a time, there was a great king. He was powerful and lived in a beautiful valley with all his people. There were animals and plants, trees and food. The valley had a river and pools of water. For this reason, there was rich, rich soil. But he was not happy because at night the frogs would croak. Croak, croak. This drove him crazy to hear the frogs croak. He would lie in his bed and toss and turn. Ugh. They still drove him crazy. Croak, croak. Croak, croak. So he called his soldiers and said to them, Tomorrow you must kill all the frogs in the valley so that we can sleep in peace. And an old wise woman came to him and said, Great king, I advise you not to kill all the frogs because if you don't have them, what, how do we know what impact it will have? Silly old woman, he said. What impacts can frogs have? Ugly, noisy creatures? I want to sleep in peace. So the soldiers went out and killed all the frogs. And sure enough, the king slept peacefully. For weeks he slept peacefully until one night. He heard an annoying sound. A mosquito. It buzzed around his head and kept him awake. So he grabbed a book and wept and wept. He kept missing but eventually he killed it and slept peacefully. But the next night there were two mosquitoes in the room. He hardly slept. The next morning he had a nasty bite. Ugh. His servants walking in the palace also had bites and were cross because they had not slept a wink. So he called together all his soldiers. I command you to go and kill all the mosquitoes, he yelled. The soldiers began to laugh as he shouted so fiercely at them that they agreed to go and kill mosquitoes. They went out with sticks and swords and with all the weapons they could find, but they could kill only one or two. Imagine killing a mosquito with a sword. But the next night, there were ten mosquitoes in the kingdom, in the king's room. He was going crazy. And it got worse. Soon there were swarms of mosquitoes everywhere in the palace. When he woke up one morning, he found that his servants had all left to go live in a different village where there were no mosquitoes. In that village, at night you would hear crook, 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 crook as the happy frogs ate up the mosquitoes. And that's the end of our story. The story um, simply teaches us that in biodiversity or in creation, we all need each other and we depend on each other. For this example, everyone was depending on the frogs to help them with the insects. Did you notice that? Once the frogs were gone from the village, the king couldn't sleep again because of the mosquitoes. So the king did need the frogs, although he did not know he needed the frogs. So I guess you now understand what the story was all about. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm going to read a Bible scripture for you, quoted from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14 to 18. Now listen. The Bible tells us that all parts of our body are important, so are all parts of God's family of creation. The body is not made up of just one part, it has many parts. Suppose the foot says, I'm not a hand, so I don't belong to the body. It is still part of the body. And suppose the ear says, I'm not an eye, so I don't belong to the body. It is still part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? If the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? God has placed each part and the body just as God wanted it to be. Then, on this part, I want you to clearly understand this. For example, let's take a machine. If a machine does not have all the necessary parts, how could it function? It would not function properly. The same as your body. It would not have an adequate function. That's, that is why we have 
special people under care because their functioning is not really adequate. But ma'am, if you don't have a lift, you can still use wheelchair. Well, you can still use a wheelchair, but then think of this. You cannot jump as other kids do. You cannot run as other kids do. It's not fair, isn't it? It's sad. It's just sad. Also, ma'am, if you can't hear anything or talk at all, you can use sign language. Well, okay. Now imagine um, using a sign language. But then this person is maybe illiterate, cannot read or write, or cannot understand the sign language at all. You will not be able to be helped. Oh, now I understand that all body parts are necessity for human operation. Yes, precisely. Now I get that you all understand? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Good. For this following activity, I'm going to hand to each learner a paper, some pens, and scissors. To this activity, they're going to draw something that God has created. Then after that, they're going to exchange the papers among each other. Then you will see what happens. I'll forgive you. They are all done with their drawings. Can you see here? We have a flower from Sonolofado, then fish from Butilo. Let me see. <laughs> it's a human from Bokamuso. Then we have are those tomatoes. We have tomatoes from Maso, then giraffe and the butterfly from Jabu. And I think this is the sea. With yeah, with fishes inside. Well, wonderful drawings. Those are very beautiful. Now I want you all to exchange these drawings amongst each other. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Now the paper that you're holding, I want you to tear it. Take a scissor. Take a scissor. Take a scissor. Take a scissor. Now and tear the paper that you're holding. Okay, 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 we're not done. Now, I want you to tell me, um, we're going to start with, um, I want to start with Jabu. Jabu, how do you feel, um, Musasa, um, Shut down your drawing. I feel disappointed. Feel disappointed. And then how do you feel, Maso? I feel confused. You feel confused. And then you, Musasa, how do you feel? I feel angry. You feel angry. Then Butelo, let's take the last one from you. How do you feel? I'm um, I'm feeling sad. You feel sad. Okay. Um this is the very same way how God feels. The very same way you feel confused, you feel sad, you feel angry, you feel disappointed. That's how God feels when you destroy his creatures, killing his ants, killing his mosquitoes, killing the waters by polluting it, killing that, that kills animals and the sorts and the like. It's how God feels. He feels sad. So we can do a lot of things to protect them. That is, that is why we need um, ourselves. The protection can start from us. It starts with you. Each and every change you want to do, it has to start with you. So in everything that we do, let us think of saving our biodiversity. Let's move to our mural activity. Rhino tells the children that he has a very sad story where like, a lot of rhinos were killed last year. Over a thousand rhinos than those being born. Well, in this activity, I would like for you guys to create a prayer for our animals out here. We can begin with it. 
Thank you, God, for the big elephant. God, please protect our animals. Well, that is all for our session today. Thank you.